first question that I've um, really wanted to talk to you about mm -hmm. was, um, you know, Maxon has been in the industry for many years now and has been a key component of the industry, and especially when the the market's been sort of fluctuating over the years. Um, what is it that you think sort of makes Maxon this constant leader in, in the three graphic space? Well, actually, I think I'd start with 20 years ago when I introduced Cinema 4D to the market here in the United States. Nobody knew who Cinema 4D was. <laughs> uh, and there were a lot of 3D packages on the market. Um, Matter of fact, I, I actually, uh, at one of the first shows I had, we were collecting leads and I was talking to a reseller that I knew in the industry and said, hey, you want to work these leads with me? And he said, eh, you guys won't last a year. <laughs> so it doesn't feel like we've been a mainstay in the market for a long time. We've worked, you know, that, that we, when it's when you ask an, an actor about their overnight success and they, you know, it's it's been a years, 20 years of hard work yeah. to get Cinema 4D into the market. I'd say the reason that we are uh, have been accepted in the market is um, we've always been very artist centric. Uh, Cinema 4D is very approachable in terms of 3D. Um, we integrate really well with other packages. We, you know, we play well with the other children so that an artist can get their work done. We don't try to position ourselves in a way that it, it's awkward to work with other packages. We make, make it work so that you can use cinema in a production environment, period. We should, you should be able to work with everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we approach the market from an artist-centric approach. Uh, I, having come from a background working as an artist and working in ad agencies, uh, I, it, that was the natural thing for me was to sell the paintbrush to the painter. And so we've always approached the market that way. And I, and I think uh, also uh, Maxon Germany has been very consistent in development. We still have the three original developers that started the product um, 20 years ago are still working on the product. So that's, that's a huge thing as well. So I, it's, it's, I think, consistency in the way we've approached the market in an artist way and focusing on building a community rather than selling a product. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I think, been definitely part of yeah. your success is the community that yes, you've built. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of graphics, they obviously, you know, here at SeaGraph we are all about graphics, yeah. but but in the general scope of where a lot of um, markets are going, both at the consumer space and the enterprise space, I mean, what do you think has really been the tipping point um, for sort of this this um, catalyst of growth in, in graphics right now? In graphics? Oh, well, well, the internet, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Pinterest, uh, you know, we're we're. Uh, I mean, it, it it gets us out of the realm of talking about graphics, but really, we're 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 evolving to a place where we communicate in imagery, memes, and and imagery. I mean, what's that little thing on Facebook now? You don't even have to type your message; you can make your message a graphic. You know, you can turn your message into a poster graphic. So, uh, you know, we've gotten to a point where we're we're communicating in images, um, and I think it's a natural progression. I mean, we we see that with uh, with our messaging online and, and advertising and things like that. We see a much bigger uh, engagement in imagery or the use of videos, and. Um, Actually, I actually I read an article recently, and I uh, it was saying something like, uh, when you're given instructions verbally, about 10% of the time people can remember it, and if you mm -hmm. uh, read the instructions, you can about 30% of the time remember it, and if you have instructions with images, it's about 70% of the time. So I just think it's human nature that 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 it's the delivery is is so much easier to absorb quickly. Exactly. We're we're also sort of at this. Um, spot in the industry where um, this a age of rendering, you know, and, and it's yes. definitely a big topic here yes. at SIGGRAPH. Um, you know, what are what would you say are the biggest aspects right now in, in, the, in rendering? The and, most and, important and aspects? And exactly. Quality and speed. Got to be pretty and got to be fast, which are <laughs> sort of fa sort of battling each other. And I think that's why you're seeing so much uh, attention nowadays on GPU rendering because um, not to get too technical, but um, CPUs are are fundamentally based on you know a single single process, and GPUs were built to handle multiple processes from the beginning. So as they get more powerful, they they can they can calculate more information much faster. Right. Um, so I think you're seeing a lot of 
a lot of excitement about GPU just because the, the, the speed enhancements are coming much quicker in that, in that arena just because they can technically. Um, but artists, are, you know, customers are always going to want quality and artists are always going to want to be able to get it done faster. I guess the clients want to get it done faster as well. But that's, those are the two major, major things is just speed and quality. And so do you think um, in terms of sort of what's been evolutionary, has it been this, this push towards more GPU based? Um, yeah, I think that's why you're seeing more push towards the GPU. I think what uh, AMD is doing is interesting where they're trying to uh, create uh, systems that are taking advantage of both CPU and mm -hmm. GPU, that they can take advantage of both worlds seamlessly. Um, it's be interesting to see how that comes about. But yeah, I think, um, you know, every year the hardware gets faster. Every year we have to, uh, the guys have to adapt the software to, you know, to new technologies and keep it, you know, going faster, faster. and. I mean, even five years ago, it's incredible. I mean, what you saw with our viewport, the new viewport in, in R19 is, you, you wouldn't have seen that five years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another question I wanted to ask you was, moving on towards um, pipelines and, um, you know, there's definitely this, this talk of pipeline changes and, mm -hmm. and new pipelines and especially sort of around VR and AR and what's going on and, and in terms of a, um, you know, an artist perspective and content, mm -hmm. developing content. How do you see, what are the, like, the big changes in pipelines? Uh, well, let's see. Storage, <laughs> the massive amounts of, of data that you're going to be creating from VR. That's, I think storage is, you know, e you know, in the content creation process, you're capturing everything. You may not use everything, but there's going to be storage. Um, I think on a more practical basis is 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 making VR more acceptable or uh, to a, a wider audience and, and more more accessible. Um, it it's sort of like when they had came out with the 3D TVs and you had the glasses on. It was my my feeling was you know I wasn't going to walk around the house with glasses on and try to get at the right angle. I'm going to be making dinner. I'm going to be doing this. I'm not going to be trying to sit at that perfect angle to watch a 3D uh, 3D TV. Kind of the same with VR. The experience is amazing, but it's immersive. You're you're immersed in it. You're going to have to be in it. You're you're stuck in that world, and there's a limit to what you can do in, in terms of that. I think it's, I think there's a lot of great applications. I think there's going to be some great game applications, some great entertainment applications. But I still think it's not quite widely acceptable yet because not everybody's rushing out to get their you know their home yeah. Vive machine. Right. You know? So um, I think AR will probably be adopted more quickly because um, once they have once there's a um, a unified or a universal delivery method, uh, say through your phone, if there's an actual software package that's built in, um, you know, everybody's carrying around their phones, everybody's looking at their phones, everybody's taking pictures. I think that once, you know, AR starts to become more prevalent, you'll see a lot more people utilizing AR more quickly than VR, mm -hmm. just because we're already married to our phones. We're already doing all these things right. with our phones. So if I can, if I can look at that microphone and and be able to bring up information on that microphone just by, you know, a symbol on the, the stand, then I think you'll see more of that type of uh, implementation. And do you see um, sort of moving on to uh, sort of markets in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, where Maxon is and, and where we think that um, some of these growth markets are going to be? What, what would you say, I mean, what are the trends that you're seeing right now in terms of uh, not, not just VR or AR, but just in general? I mean, the, you know, are you seeing growth areas in kind of particular market segments? Um, yes. I mean, obviously, VR and AR are big buzzwords right now because they are very exciting. There's a lot you can do with it, and um, you know, as it as it develops more, everybody's going to want to become involved in that because it's it's exciting. It's it's new. But we are seeing a lot more three D visualization, um, medical animations. Yeah. We're seeing a lot more medical animation. We're seeing a lot in um, industrial and um, architectural visualization. Um, actually, it's, 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 it has been much more adopted in the European markets that they do these 3D visualizations of, of buildings and, and architectural models and that type of thing. It's starting to come over here a little bit more. Um, people want to see what that house is going to look like in the neighborhood. You know, on an afternoon where the mm -hmm. sun's at the right angle and those types of things. Um, but we're seeing a lot more adoption of, of 3D into, the, into all those little niche industries like medical and scientific and that type of thing. What types of applications are they using for, for medical that you're seeing? Everything. We've got uh, people who are creating animations, uh, 
for pharmaceutical companies to show how a drug is going to affect your arthritis. They'll show you know, how the drug is working within your body. We've got um, doctors uh, paying to have videos to put together to show what the procedure is and what it, how, the, how it's going to be done to you so you're prepared for what's going to happen to you in an animated way so it's less, you know, less scary. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, teaching. We're seeing it as a teaching tool. Um, I've actually seen there's an AR tool that's in development for um, you know, early stages of surgery and, and uh, being, knowing the anatomy and those types of mm -hmm. things um, uh, all over the place. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. Um, well, you know, that was pretty much um, the extent of the questions I had for oh. Paul, but um, I wanted, uh, you know, we wanted to open it up to also anybody else that had sort of, you know, more um, market-related questions or um, uh, any insights? Anybody? To repeat for those people not on a mic, he was, uh, he was asking about uh, utilizing external power, so uh, supplementing your hardware with external machines. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, all, all of our clients, a lot of our clients are doing that. Even freelancers are setting up quad GPU boxes attached to their, you know, the machine that they're used to working on just to get that extra GPU power. Uh, I, again, I think it's a matter of uh, giving them the ability to increase their production workflow, make things faster, gives them the ability to create more iterations, give their clients more options. Uh, yeah, I, 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 all these improvements are going to make it easier for artists to, to not only deliver what they, their clients need, but to give them lots of options make them to be able to explore and be more creative too. Where, where do we see the average filmmaker, up and coming filmmaker, and how they're using Cinema 4D? We're seeing a lot of independent filmmakers. I mean, I've got a 14 year old in my booth who created his own VR game. I have, uh, we had a kid, I got, he must be, I don't know how old he is, but we had a, a at, at the age of 15, entered a, his film in a film festival up in Seattle and won the film festival, 15 years old. The whole thing was shot on green screen in his garage and around the neighborhood and he created his own environments inside of cinema and effects and things like that. They were rudimentary, but it was it was amazing. So that's I, we're seeing a lot more of that. We're seeing a lot of independent filmmakers. That's the amazing thing about the technology now. It's so accessible and if you're gonna put the effort into it, anybody could make a film nowadays. Anybody could, you can put up a green screen anywhere and the, the technology is incredible. You, you got the Adobe Suite, you got cinema, you can, you can make a film. I, I've very rarely seen a single person put out a large amount of, of just pure 3D animation by themselves. It's, that's, that's a lot of work. But filming, creating environments, and doing compo you know, compositing 3D elements into a film, I think that's a little bit more accessible. We have had people create films. Uh, M. Dot Strange, I think he's done four films. Um, uh, early on, we had a, a guy, uh, Captain Phil McNally, who had, was one of the first, and this was 15 years ago, who did, did like fi a five-minute short. But it took him two years. Um, it, it wouldn't take that long nowadays, but it really takes a lot of tenacity to do that. I always. When people talk about the, you know, the time it takes to do 3D, I always say, well, there's a good reason it takes Disney a year and a half to make a 90-minute movie with how many animators? I mean, that's, you know, so a year and a half, that much animation. If they have 90 animators, you're talking about an average of one minute of animation over the course of a year and a half. So I'm, I'm making those numbers up, but just in general, you know, uh, it, it, it's a lot of work to create a pure animated feature. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Paul. It was wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.